Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with a Hurricane Outlook and discussion recorded on June 26, 2023, around 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. In today's video, we have a lot to talk about, including the remnants of Tropical Storm Sydney that could be making a comeback over the next several days, and a look at what's in store for the remainder of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, it is relatively quiet, at least for the time being. However, we do have a fairly potent tropical wave that will be moving through the Caribbean islands over the next several days. And we'll talk about more about this particular system here in just a minute. We also have the remnants of Tropical Storm Sydney, which we'll also be discussing today, and more thunderstorms and more convective activity associated with the intertropical convergence zone down here off the coast of Africa. None of these waves are imminent to develop, but there is signs in the modeling forecast that we could be dealing with a strong tropical wave in about the next five to six days, so we're also going to take a look at that today. So first in business here, we have a fairly potent tropical wave here as shown by the infrared satellite imagery. A lot of shower and thunderstorm activity associated with this wave. It is nothing particularly strong. There is no tropical development expected with this wave, but it is going to be moving through the Lesser Antilles over the next several days. So places like Trinidad, Tobago, up towards St. Lucia in the Grenadines, Barbados, Dominica, uh, Guadalupe, those places might see some showers and thunderstorms over the next day or two associated with this tropical wave. The potential for some flooding, gusty winds up to 35 to 50 miles per hour in spots, and again, some heavier rainfall as well. So this is going to be moving through the Caribbean islands over the next several days and then into the ABC islands, which is right over here. This is the ABC islands, and the storm will be moving fairly close, or this, this wave will be moving fairly close to this area, again, bringing with it some gusty winds and heavy rainfall, but no tropical system is expected to form out of this. Here are the remnants of Tropical Storm Sydney this morning. We notice that there is still a spin in the atmosphere in the lowest levels right here. This is the old low-level vortex that was the core for Tropical Storm Sydney. And this is getting ejected well away from the circulation. It's just a remnant spin here. And you notice all of these thunderstorm towers are getting sheared off towards the north and east. And that's because there's a lot of shear impacting our storm right now and this is not able to regenerate into a wave or into a tropical cyclone rather however within about a couple of days or so the storm is expected to move gradually off towards the north and west and move fairly close to the island of bermuda where regeneration is certainly possible after that if we look here at the Tropical Weather Outlook that was issued just about two hours ago, this was the 8 a.m. Tropical Weather Outlook for this morning, we noticed that here's the remnant circulation of Tropical Storm Sydney, and is it, expected, it is expected to move off towards the north-northwest here during the next several days. And then you can see the Hurricane Center has highlighted this area for a 30% area for formation. So there's a 30% chance right now, according to the Hurricane Center, that this could become a tropical depression or storm again within about the next five to six days as a storm as a system gradually moves off towards uh, the north then and again this is getting uh, pretty close to places like halifax nova scotia up towards then st john's there way off uh, about 45 north here uh, but this system could definitely get fairly close to halifax over the next several days and impact portions of nova scotia so let's go ahead and find out what's going to happen with that so what we're looking at here, this is the GFS model forecast, and we're looking at the precipital water field. So anywhere within the darker shades here of red and pink, this indicates higher precipital water, meaning more moisture in the atmosphere uh, for there to kind of be squeezed out into precipitation. So this is actually the moisture field associated with the remnants of Tropical Storm Sydney right here where my cursor is. And over the next several days, we see how this moisture field gradually gets stretched off towards the north. You notice what's happening here. There's a fairly big trough of low pressure that is expected to form and dive into the United States throughout the next several days. And this trough here, you kind of notice how it's getting pinched off towards the north, where you kind of got the vertical acceleration right here where my cursor is just off the coast of 
uh, the Northeast US. And this is basically what's going to be pushing a lot of this moisture from Sydney to the north over the next several days. So in fact here you can see the remnants of that moisture or from, from Sydney get actually pushed all the way up into northern Maine, into Nova Scotia. And over the next several days, our storm actually begins to find itself within a little bit more favorable of an environment. There is going to be some dry air that will be wrapping around from uh, just mid-latitude processes here. But we can go on and zoom in and we notice what's going to be happening over the next several days that this system tries to consolidate into a tropical cyclone. But you can see all this moisture getting strung up to, towards the north here. So this definitely raises the alarm bells that if there isn't a tropical cyclone, there's at least going to be a lot of heavy rainfall to portions potentially even as far west as Maine over the next couple of days. There could be some heavier rainfall and you could be dealing with some flooding issues. And then the GFS continues to indicate that this system could actually become a fairly potent system. And this is Halifax right here. And our tropical system is, according to the GFS, is just sitting um, not more really than about a couple hundred miles. We're talking about 50 to 150 miles off the coast here from Halifax. It's a little bit hard to judge here. But generally speaking, this would be a fairly potent impact to portions of Nova Scotia. This goes out to uh, the July 2nd time frame here at 2 a.m. This would be a fairly potent impact and something that can't be ruled out for a potential tropical storm, maybe even low-end hurricane impact to portions of Nova Scotia. It's a little bit too early to, to say for sure, but there could be some impacts from the system. This is what the model track ensemble forecast looks like for the remnants of Sydney. And this was yesterday's forecast, but it still stands that for the most part, there is a fairly good idea that the storm is going to lift off towards the north here, passing just near or to the east of Bermuda. And then the track forecast begins to diverge from there. But most of the guidance today continues to indicate a track generally towards Nova Scotia at this particular point. Places like Halifax up there might be impacted by the storm. And it's not too early or it's, it's not, it is too early to rule out the possibility right now that we could be dealing with impacts even to Maine, especially northeastern Maine, over the next several days from this system. What impacts, how bad, nobody knows for sure right now. And if anyone says they do, well, they're not being honest because we just simply do not know. But again, there is a fairly decent and increase in confidence that we could be dealing with some type of system, whether that be a tropical cyclone or just a rainmaker, proportions of Nova Scotia over the next couple of days and potentially northeastern Maine as well. So just remain on alert and we'll be watching the forecasts with that and bring updates as needed. So what's next across the tropics? Well, looking at the sea surface temperature anomaly map that was last updated as of yesterday, or yeah, this would actually be two days ago, uh, we noticed that, relatively speaking, it is still very warm across the tropical main development region. There has been a little bit of cooling in the tropical main development region, but not much. And the sea surface temperature anomaly map here is indicating that our water temperatures are roughly about 2 to 2.5 two degrees Celsius above the long-term average, which is still extremely, extremely, extraordinarily uh, just rare. You don't really see that and definitely paints a little bit of a concerning picture for uh, the remainder of the hurricane season. And we're also watching the developing El Nino out here across the tropical uh, and equatorial Pacific. However, one interesting thing here is that the water temperatures have actually kind of dipped a little bit over the last couple of weeks um, here in the equatorial Pacific, mainly the Nino 3-4 area, which has actually cooled off a little bit. Um, as we've kind of gotten these easterly wind bursts off the coast of South America here to kind of upwell some cooler water and sort of halt the progress of this rapidly uh, intensifying El Nino. And we also have got this fairly cold uh, relative to average, I and mean, it's not cold, cold, but relative to average, it is cooler than normal off the coast of California and the Baja Peninsula. And this is also putting a theoretical limit to the Eastern Pacific hurricane season, which still has yet to even have a named storm. 
and may not have a named storm at least for the next couple of days, um, which is exceedingly, I wouldn't say rare, but it certainly has been a little bit since we've not seen a June Eastern Pacific storm. Uh, but that's in part because this cooler water here is putting a limit to where these storms can actually form. And so it is helping the rising motion to kind of be persistent over the Atlantic Basin, at least for the time being. And that certainly could play a big role uh, as we progress later into the hurricane season for potentially more storms to form. So in terms of what could be happening over the next several weeks in the Atlantic Basin, we're looking at a diagram here. This is the velocity potential at 200 millibars in the atmosphere, showing the rising and sinking motions. So we can see here in the green, this indicates rising motion, and in the browns, this is the suppressive motion and kind of sinking air in the atmosphere. So uh, roughly this corresponds here. You've kind of got your places on the map. Generally speaking, this is like the Eastern Pacific Basin right through here. And then this would correspond to the Atlantic Basin. And then over here in the West Pacific Basin over here. So over the next couple of days, this goes down in time to July 23rd. Uh, this is the Atlantic Basin with Brett and Sydney located right here. We're going to be uh, under the phase of a suppressive motion in the atmosphere throughout the next couple of weeks. And this is going to temper any significant tropical cyclone formation, at least in the near term. However, within the next several weeks and towards the end, middle to latter part of July, there is a Kelvin wave that is expected, basically just a smaller scale rising uh, motion in the atmosphere that propagates from west to east. And this will end up in the eastern Pacific Basin here uh, sometime within the next few days and then slowly propagate eastward into the Atlantic Basin by mid to late July. And you can see rising motion setting up across most of the Atlantic and Africa within the next several weeks. So this indicates that we might be in a little bit of a low period right now where we don't really have much activity and then towards the latter part, mid to latter part of July is when activity could start to pick up again. This doesn't mean that we can't see one or two named storms, at least during this time frame. There is going to be a strong tropical wave that is going to merge off the coast of Africa within five or six days. That does have some model support, but overall the environmental conditions are not super supportive for development until really the latter half, mid to latter part of July. So again, not too much going on right now. Uh, but the Eastern Pacific Basin is definitely lighting up. Looking at the Eastern Pacific Basin, there is two systems that we're going to be monitoring over the next several days. We've got a pair of tropical waves that could go on to develop into tropical depressions or potentially even hurricanes. First of all, we've got a tropical wave that is uh, just kind of off the coast of Mexico here. And this is going to be moving westward over the next several days. And this could form into a brief depression storm, potentially even hurricane within the next few days as it moves westward. And then we've got this system behind it right here where my cursor is. And this system is going to be worth paying attention to over the next several days because this actually poses more of a threat to land. If we actually take off the satellite imagery here and just kind of look at everything, uh, and zoom in you notice that our tropical wave back here actually the formation area is rather close to land here as the storm generally pivots off towards the north and west and there has been model data support for a potential impact to portions of coastal mexico over the next couple of weeks or days not weeks um, but again we're still probably about another six to eight days away from that being the case if that were to happen so of course if anything we'll be updating you on that all right so that being said i do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening of course god bless to everyone take care i am michael romali i'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow